We are thrilled to spend some time with award-winning children's author and illustrator Mo Willems before his presentation of the library's 2012 McFadden Memorial Lecture here at North Central High School. Among his many awards, Mo has earned the Caldecott Honor for his children's books. Many of you know of the popular characters such as the Pigeon, Nuffle Bunny, Elephant and Piggy, among others. Mo also earned six Emmy Awards for his writing on Sesame Street back in the 1990s. And Mo, it's a pleasure to have you with us today and uh, thanks for joining us. Among your various pursuits, I know <laughs> that you're also an animator, uh, an artist with works, uh, your sculptures and ceramics uh, uh, exhibited throughout the country. Is writing for children still your main interest? I, well, certainly it's the thing I spend most of my time with. I, I, I don't necessarily think I write for children. I write for silly people. And I write for people who haven't learned how to be embarrassed yet. And it just turns out that most of them are children, but that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, we all love the pigeon and your other Thank characters, you. but when you create these characters, how do you determine how they're going to resonate with children or silly people? I have no idea. I mean, you know, that's sort of the, the great glory of what I do is I only do 50% of the work. I, I, I work hard and I create the characters in the way that I think that they're going to be the funniest, but I don't know what they're going to mean. I don't insert meaning into my books. I allow my audience to. So times like t this lecture that I'll do tonight or when I'm traveling, I actually meet people and I read the books and then I get to see what it means because mm -hmm. It is the audience that creates the meaning. You know, in uh, the French language, when you go to a movie, you watch a movie. But when you go to a, uh, the theater, you assist in a piece of theater. Mm -hmm. And so I think of my readers as not just readers, but of my assistants. They assist in the meaning of the book. Interesting. But among your various initial inspirations, are you intending to simply introduce children to the world of books or to have your characters instill simple life lessons? No, I'm trying to answer questions that I don't know. I mean, that's it. I, I come across something that I don't understand. What is it like to be a friend? Uh, how do you deal with not being able to, to have your life's dream? All of these questions that I don't know the answers to, that then becomes a springboard for the books. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a real mistake for me to write what I know because then it's didactic. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote one book. I wrote a book called Time to Pee. I know how to pee, right? <laughs> but it's not my best book because it is a little bit didactic. It tells people what to do, and I don't want to be doing that. I just want to show that I share in my audience's confusion. Okay, very good. I mentioned uh, that you did a lot of television writing and animating mm -hmm. uh, years ago. You were a writer on Sesame Street uh, for about 10 years. That's right. Share some of your memories of that. How important was that particular experience toward your writing today? Well, certainly Sesame Street was uh, of paramount importance because before I started at Sesame, I was an animator and a writer, but I was doing adult comedy. And uh, I wanted to write for adults. And I found myself at Sesame Street and I said, oh, great, I'm writing sketch comedy. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. And that felt cool to me. And writing for kids, uh, whatever. And as I started writing, season after season, I realized that it was harder than writing for adults because you don't have cultural modifiers. You can't talk about the Super Bowl or an object or a popular musical group because my audience hasn't been around that long. So I'm stuck with the core emotions, jealousy, hatred, love, excitement, wanting to drive a bus, you know, really the core fundamental things. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I'm not really that interested in popular culture, I fell in love with writing for kids. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So it not only changed the way I write, it changed the, the what I wanted to write and who I wanted to write for. So there became a time after your about 10 years on mm -hmm. Sesame Street that you said, okay, I want to write and really devote my myself yeah. to that. Well, you know, and I did other television series for kids in the interim and things like that. I think the difference between television, and this is just the way it's going to be no matter what, is that there are a lot of people. It's a, a lot of money to make television and therefore it becomes uh, communal which is good but it also becomes corporate on a certain level it's harder to have an individual voice mm -hmm. because there's so much at stake and when you write a book there's nothing at stake there's just printers cost mm -hmm. and so you're allowed to be much more individual much more eccentric and do a lot weirder things so that freedom was something that I really wanted to have. I really missed that freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to work at home. I had a kid. I wanted to, the irony of writing for children and not being with my child was too much. Now, you live in Massachusetts That's with right, wife and child. Mm -hmm. As you and your family get older, does that change your perspective or some of your inspiration toward what you may want to do in the future? 
I, you know, it does. I don't think that I'm going to write up as my daughter ages necessarily, but uh, you know, the older you get, the the more philosophical you get in certain ways. You know, mm -hmm. and what's the joy and the horror of writing a book is, as soon as you're done with a book, you have a blank page, and whatever you've done before is somewhat relevant because you have muscles. You know, you're an athlete, mm -hmm. but ultimately you're still faced with that blank page, and and that's also the joy. I have no idea what's going to come next, and I kind of don't want to know. Well, people can learn what may come next if they follow your website, <laughs> MoWillems.com. We want to make sure we mention that. Okay, thank you. And encourage uh, library patrons, families, kids, mm -hmm. silly people to check out your books from the library's website at imcpl.org. And Mo, thank you for joining sure, us, John, and the best of luck fun. with the McFadden Memorial Lecture tonight here at North Central High School. All right, thanks.